take this opportunity lightly. Not too many ministries allow associate ministers, elders, and what have you, bring the bread of life, but I thank God for our leadership who allows us to Amen. cultivate the gifts that God has given us. Amen. Amen. So in their absence, I want to honor um, Senior Pastor Henry and Co-Pastor Fanny, my parents in the gospel who love me and discipline me and all that other good stuff. Amen. Amen. So I think, thank God for them. I thank God for my best friend, Executive Pastor Calvin, in his absence. Um, his wife, Alicia, and the honor to whom honors do. I thank you all for coming out on this morning. I want to say a special thank you to my brother from another mother, uh, to Bron Baker and his lovely family, Yenny and Jeremiah. Amen. We served together in ministry before, and I'm just thankful that they came out to support me this morning. Amen. 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 So, Amen. as you saw, the title for this message is, Have You Paid the Debt? Mm -hmm. As this time was coming up, I wasn't really supposed to minister until next week, but you scheduled conflicts, they threw me up here today, and I'm just, I was like, Lord, I'm not quite ready yet. I, I had, thought I had another week to to get this out, but obviously it was time for it to come today, man. Oh, you gonna do all right, bro? As you all know, my family and I are preparing to leave, and I was sitting there and I was thinking, I said, what? Lord, do you have me to say to your people? All right. As this is my last message for this season, mm -hmm. I said, Lord, what, what do I say? And he just said, plainly, he said, tell me you love me. Mm. Praise God. I said, okay. That seems simple enough, but he said, tell me that you love me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Lord, you know, we talk a lot about love, and we say we want our actions to line up with what we say. Mm -hmm. So I started to point, I said, Lord, I hope that when I said that I love him, that my audio messed up with my video. That I just didn't say it and keep it moving. Amen. For those of you who have heard me speak before, you know I love definitions. Mm -hmm. So I looked up the word love as I began to prepare. It says, strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties, mm -hmm. an assurance of affection, a beloved person, unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another as the fatherly concern of God for humankind or brotherly concern for others. I said, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> but that was the Webster's Dictionary. So, he took me to Romans chapter 13, verse 8. All right. And throughout my message, I'm going to be jumping to a lot of different scriptures. I'll give it to you. Don't worry about turning there. Just write them down and go read them a little bit later. Do some homework and go back and, and read what thus said the Lord. Let me uh, start this timer so I can make sure I don't go over time. Amen. Amen. Y'all know I mean? I'll be one of them other preachers like y'all going over y'all time. So I'm going to make sure I stay within my time. Amen. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to read Romans 13, chapter 8. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. In the word of the Lord reads, keep out of debt and owe no man anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor who practices loving others has fulfilled the law relating to one's fellow man meeting all its requirements. So again, the title of the message is, Have You Paid the Debt? All of us, a time or two, and maybe still now, have a debt. Some of us have some vehicles that we paid to the bank, you know, that's a debt. Mm -hmm. Some of us have a credit card, that's a debt. Mm -hmm. House. House, there you go, uh, mm -hmm. Doug Williams. A house, yes. But to really get the crux of what I'm trying to say, I wanted to define debt for you. It says sin, trespass, something owed, obligation, a state of owing. Mm -hmm. And we all know that famous scripture we read as a child, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because of God's love for us, he sent his only Son to pay the debt that was rightfully ours. But in our text, we're told to owe no man anything except to love them. Mm -hmm. God gave us the ultimate example to follow. He showed us love in the most purest of forms. And the only thing he asked us to do was to love one another. 
You've heard me say time and time again, if I had to sacrifice my daughters for people that would reject them, I couldn't do it. Just plain and simple. I love my daughters too much to sacrifice them for people that would turn against them. I just couldn't do it. But we as children of God are to owe no man anything except to love them. The word love is used approximately 121 times in the Old Testament and 179 times in the New Testament. That says a lot. That's a lot of times for a word to show up. Yes, it is. But God was motivated by love. God didn't have to create us, but because he desired a family, he created us. He desired a people who, who he could love and they would love him in return. And because that relationship was compromised back in the garden, God had to send the second Adam, talking about Jesus, to redeem us from what the first Adam had lost. Mm -hmm. But God did all this because of his love. Amen. Amen. Amen, in this season, I truly believe that people are looking for love. Mm -hmm. They're looking for the church. And we're not talking about the physical church, but we're talking about the universal church the representing of God's kingdom. They are looking for somewhere to bring their concerns and cares. They are looking for a place that will accept them and help them. They are looking for love. They are looking for that unconditional love. I've heard this term used many times within church circles that there is no hurt like church hurt. We have a lot of Christians in the church who are hurt and because they hurt, they tend to hurt others. But we're not to hurt one another, but we're to love each other. Yes. The love, the lost are seeking that love they heard, they have heard about. We learned a few weeks ago about the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. She had heard about the great things Jesus was able to do. And because of her faith, she was healed. Mm -hmm. But she sought Jesus out because of what she heard. So that begs the question for us today. What are people saying about us? Are we a ministry that allows the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us? Yep. Or better yet, are we a ministry that shows love? We can say we love one another, but are we showing that love? Because people don't want to come into a cold service where there is no love. I believe many churches today are be, are, can be accused of false advertising. They say they are the church of God and believe in Jesus, but yet they have no love. Mm. Amen. This cannot be. That's right. I know for me personally, I would rather see a Christian on the street who hugs me and that hug is, is built and, and has love with it than to come into a cold service. Amen. Because most people decide to stay at home for that. Mm. But my desire is when anyone steps into a covenant restoration service that they feel God's love. Amen. I remember I was in Okinawa and I was going to a church and I went to this one church because at the time I was married, not to my wife presently, but my first wife. And I joined this ministry because it was a ministry that would help her to grow into what God had called her to do. Um, things didn't work out, she never came, so that ministry wasn't for me. So when I went to this other church, when I walked in there, I felt God's love. And I felt that this is where God needed me to be, which was the catalyst for me meeting my wife. So, but because I felt God's love, I was able to join that ministry because I felt the love that was there. They didn't just say they loved us, but they showed it. First John chapter four, verse 16 says this, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So again, if we say we are of God, we should be having some love in us. This is how we repay our debt. Remember, our debt of death was paid when Jesus went to the cross. That debt was ours. And you read, you can read in the word, I know you read it before, where it says the wages of sin is death. So that debt that Jesus paid was ours. And all he asks us to do is to love one another. And this includes that those that we may not that may not like us, dress like us, or even smell like us. The same law 
the same love God has shown to us, we should be showing to others. That is a true mark of a disciple. That our audio matches our video. Jumping down in the same chapter, 1 John 14, I'm going to read verses 19 through 21. It says, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Amen. And this commandment have we from him, that we who love God love his brother also. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that I love God, but I hate the teeth. Mm. Uh-oh. Come on now. Come All on. right. I can't say that I love God, but I don't speak to Brother Williams. Mm. Come on. It now. cannot be. All right. That's right. If I say that I love God, then I should be loving my brother also. Yes. Because this is the person that I do see. That's right. But how can I say I love God who I don't see? That's right. right. Come on, come on. That's a contradiction. Mm. We cannot say we love God but hate our brother. That's right. And I know some may say the word hate is a strong word and you would be correct. But we can't say that we love God and hate our brothers. We say we love God, but we walk in church and not speak. Mm. These things just do not work. That's right. We have to understand the kingdom of God. And I truly believe the currency, love is the currency of the kingdom. Right. And when those that are lost come into the church, they are looking to make a withdrawal. All right. But we are bankrupt, not just spiritually, but also in the area of love. Mm. And more often than not, we don't have any love to give because we may still be holding on past hurts and past experiences. Jesus, come on now, you preach. They come into the church wanting to be loved. That's right. They come into church looking for something that they can't find in the world. That's right. It's that love. Yes. But if they don't feel the love from the moment they hit that door, they're going to turn around and go the other way. We as a church have to love and not just love the ones that look like us. All right, come we on. We gotta love the ones that don't look like us. Yes. We gotta love the white people, the brown people, the young people. We gotta love everybody. That's right. Why? Because that's what God did. Yes. yes. That's what Jesus did. He loved everybody. That's right. He was no respecter of persons. We don't want to risk loving someone because they may hurt us. Mm. And me and my wife started courting, and I told her the reasons why I got divorced. And she asked me a question plain and simple. She said, do you have any problems with trust? Mm. Because given the situation that I came out of with my ex-wife cheated on me, that could have caused me to have issues with trust. And I told her plain and simple, no. I trust anybody until they show me otherwise. That's right. The same is true for love. If I say I'm a Christian, I should have some love shown. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Amen. Amen. Loving someone isn't a hard process, but many times, because we're hurt, we don't want to take that risk of being all right, all right. hurt. Come on. Well, the last church hurt me. Mm. Well, the last pastor hurt me. Okay, oh, that ain't got nothing to do with this pastor. That's Amen. right. Amen. You got to let that go. Yes. Because you'll miss out because you're still holding on to something that's in your past. If I would have held on to what happened to me in my first marriage, I wouldn't have been able to be blessed with my now marriage. Amen. Amen. But you got to let things go. Yes. Even as Jesus hung on the cross, he asked his father to forgive them for they knew not what they were doing. I don't know about you, but I'm, if I'm being crucified for people that will reject me, the last words out of my mouth would be saying, Father, forgive them. But that's love. That when that person hurts you, you got to forgive them. Yes. Yep. Now, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. You can forgive them, but you need to use wisdom as you go forward. Amen. Right. That's right. All right now. Come on. Because if that person broke your trust, you can forgive them, but that doesn't mean you have to trust them again. That's right. Come on. That's called wisdom. Yes. So keep that in mind. But we must show love to everyone. That is a true mark of a Christian. 
Jesus said in Luke 5, 31 through 32, and Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So that tells me that the sick are going to be at our doorsteps. The prostitute, the drug addict, the adulterer, they're looking for love. And that's why Jesus left us here. So that we could be that tangible love that his word says is there. Because a lot of people won't come into these doors. You know where they're going to be? On your job. At school, your neighborhood, Walmart, you name it, they're going to be there. Because they may be the only Jesus they will ever see. But if we don't have that love and they can't identify us, then we might want to go back and check the mail. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 2 says this. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Yes. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. That's right. Ooh, Jesus, come on now. You can do all that. You can come in here and speak tongues up and down, up and down every aisle. You can lay hands on the sick. You can heal the dead. You can raise the dead. But if you don't have love, it's nothing to God. That's right. Come on. It's nothing. We have to be motivated by love. That's right. We have to operate in love. Yes. God says that's nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't have love. First John 3, 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in need and in truth. Mm. I do believe that's the key as we prepare for the harvest that God is about to send in the covenant restoration. Because we have to be Exercising, we have to be demonstrating that love. Because yeah. that's what people are looking for. They're looking for love. And that's part of our 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 vision. Covenant restoration. You can't restore somebody if you don't love them. Amen. Come on now. But let's not get that love mistaken for something else. You gotta love. And love will stretch you. Yes. It's gonna stretch you. It's going to stretch you outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But that's what God desires for us to do. We have to, he wants to stretch us. We have to be ready. We have to be ready to, 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 to give, up, give up that love. We have to have that currency, as I spoke about earlier. The currency of the kingdom is love. But if we don't have that love, then what are we here for? Mm -hmm. Jesus, everything Jesus did was motivated by love. Yes. Him going to the cross was about love. So we as his disciples, if we say we are Christians, which means Christ-like, then we should be exhibiting that love. Yes. Something God revealed to me was this. The love we show to someone now may not pay off in our time, but may benefit our children or our grandchildren. Mm. You may be saying, show me some Bible in the elder. I'm glad you asked. Turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. And I'm going to read from the King James Version. And it says, And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the son of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. 1 Samuel chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. And we all heard the story of David and how the prophet Samuel went to, to the house of Jesse and he had looked for a king. And when he had met all the other kids, he said, is there another? And Jesse said, yes, my son David, who was out tending to the sheep. And then once David came on the scene, the oil began to flow, which was signified that David was the same coming king. And Samuel anointed him. And you keep reading on between 1 Samuel 18 all the way through to chapter 31. You see the story of David and how he went to give some food to his brothers while they were battling Goliath. And 
while he was there, he ended up being in the fight with Goliath, and he ended up killing the Philistine, and that's how Saul began to know who David was. And you can read, again, through chapters 18 through 31 about David, Saul, and Jonathan, and everything that transpired. But the, the point I wanted to make was, Jonathan and David loved each other. Jonathan even understood that David was going to be king. Now, Jonathan being the son of Saul, he was the right, the heir. The throne should have been his. But he understood that God had anointed David to be king. But their relationship never changed. Jonathan loved David. So much so that when Saul got jealous of all the notoriety that David had, and he decided that he was going to kill David, Jonathan went and told David everything that his daddy was going to do. Now that's a love right there. I'm going to disobey my father and tell you what he's planning. Because that's the kind of love that he had for David. And again, through chapters 18 to 31, for time's sake, I'm not even going to go there, but you read about how when David had cornered Saul, where he could have killed Saul, he didn't. Because he understood that though Saul was the people's king, he was still in a position of authority. Mm. And he told his, his men, don't kill him. Because he was still in a position of authority. So we go on and do those chapters, and then David, Jonathan is killed, and so is Saul. So then that's when David comes to the throne. And then over in 2 Samuel chapter 9, David is trying to show kindness to anyone who was left from the house of Saul or Jonathan. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3, it says, And the king said, Is there yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness to the ki show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan have yet son which is lame on his feet. I'm going to jump down to verse 6. It says, Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said to Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Because of the love David had for Jonathan, he was able to show that love to David's son, to Jonathan's son. Because of the debt David felt he owed the house of Saul, Mephibosheth was blessed. The love you show to your brother or sister may allow your children or grandchildren to be blessed long after you're gone. God always makes provision for his children. But when you show the genuine love of God to someone, there is no limit to how far that love will be extended. As I continue along my Christian walk, I hope someone I come across may be able to bless my children or even my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. yeah. Senior pastor spoke last week about leaving an inheritance for our children and our children's children. What an awesome inheritance to leave than love. Yes. The love you show to someone else and they in turn show love to your children. Mm -hmm. When people speak of you, what better way for them to describe you than you are a person who loves everybody? Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying everyone you encounter will be easy to love. That's right. Somewhere along the way, we have come up with this idea that we are only to love those that love us. Mm. Or we're only to love those who are nice to us. But I've read, I've read those 66 books a number of times, and I'll never remember it saying that it's going to be easy to love someone. As I said earlier, it's going to cause you to stretch. Yeah. Loving someone is going to cause you to stretch. Matthew 5 and 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. When you love that person who is out to make your life difficult, God honors that. When you pray for someone you know is trying to tear you down, God honors that. I remember my first duty, my first assignment, it was in Mount Home, Idaho. And at this time, I believe I was the only, no, it was only two of us that were black. And my superintendent knew that I was a Christian. Now this man, I do believe, was a racist. 
and not only was he a racist, he caused me to get one of my assignments canceled. I had an assignment to Rammstein Air Base, Germany. Good place, good place. Mm. But this man got my assignment canceled. Mm -hmm. Mm. But it was all, all in the plan of God, and I stayed there a little bit longer so I could get trained, so I could be ready for the next season in my life. Well, one day this man walked into the office that I worked in, and he asked me to pray for his daughter. His daughter was pregnant and going through some complications, and he asked me to pray. Now, back then, I wasn't as keen on my facial expression, so I'm pretty sure my facial expression looked at him and allowed, you for real? You really want me to pray for your daughter? After you have canceled my assignment, gave me bad paperwork, which held up my promotion, but you want me to pray for your daughter? Now y'all know what I did. I, I prayed. I prayed. I was obedient and I prayed. And you know, she was able to get through her pregnancy and her the baby was fine. But that caused me to grow. Yes. And it caused yes. me to understand that there are going to be people that I encounter in my life that I may consider unlovable. All right. All right. But it ain't up to me to decide that. I'm still supposed to pray. That's right. Amen. Because we have to handle the situation. How we handle the situation is a direct reflection of the God that we serve. Mm, that's right. People will form their opinions about God based on their interaction with us. If we say we're Christians. Yes. They want to see that in the midst of you being torn down, what are you doing? What are you saying? Are we exhibiting that love? Mm. Or are we acting like the world acts? Mm. Are we cussing people out? Or are we showing that a God pay love? That come on, man. Love. come on, come on. Ooh, Jesus. Because what they're going to say is, if you act this way, why don't want to serve your God? Mm. One of Tina Turner's popular song was, What's Love Got to Do With It? Come on. Everything. Yes, Lord. Love is what sets us apart. Yes. Love is what we will be identified by. Love has everything to do with it. Yes. When those who are lost come into our church service, they are seeking that love. Mm -hmm. They are looking to make a withdrawal of love from us. But have we paid our debt of love? Yes. Just as with my car loan, the bank wants their money on the first of every month. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah, they because I have a contract with them. That's right. They That's want right. their debt paid back. Mm. The same is true for the house, for the kingdom of God. When we enter into our contract with Jesus, when we said that I will serve you. Our responsibility is to pay our debt back in the currency of love. Mm -hmm. But are we delinquent on our payments? Mm. Have our actions demonstrated love? Mm. We don't want God to come and ask us what Janet Jackson asked us. What have you done for me lately? Mm. My prayer is sharing God's love, not just with one another, but those who are outside these four oh. walls. will let them know that we do that we are loved, that we demonstrate that love. Amen. That is my message, amen. I'm trying to keep it short. Love is, is important. Yes, it is. It's very important. And as we go, as God is shifting us, it's going to be key. Because there are going to be people that come through those doors who need God's love. That's right. And if we don't show it, they're going to turn around and go away. And it's too, it's too important. Lives are too important. That's right. Yes, it is. He's coming back, and it's coming back soon. Yes, it is. But we have to be ready as they come through those doors to show God's love to them. And we are standing. Let me get us some, some prayers. If you have anything you need.